Hello everyone. Welcome to Learn Wireless Technology. In this tutorial, we will discuss about the functions of RRC layer. The RRC layer controls the lower layers in the UE and E node B. Let's first take a look at the list of main functions and services provided by the RRC layer. Broadcast of system information related to access stratum and non-access stratum. It includes the information such as cell selection and reselection parameters, handover parameters, neighbor cell information, etc. These information are included in the system information messages which are MIB and SIBs. MIB is master information block which contains most essential physical layer information of the cell that is required to receive further system information. SIBs are system information block messages which provides cell access related information and parameters. As of LTE release 14, there are 21 SIBs defined in LTE each carrying different information that can be used for various static and mobility procedures. Paging, which is used to inform UE about incoming call or notification. RRC connection control functions such as establishment, maintenance and release of an RRC connection between the UE and EUTRAN, which includes allocation of temporary identifiers between UE and EUTRAN and configuration of signaling radio bearers for RRC connection. Mobility functions such as UV cell selection and reselection, intrafrequency, interfrequency, and interat handovers. Handover procedure includes UV performing measurements of serving and neighboring cells belonging to same or different rats and reporting the frequencies and metrics to the network according to the configuration. Reporting can be event-based or periodic. Radio resource configuration assignment and modification. This is to establish, modify or release the radio resources that may be required during mobility. The RRC context information is transferred during inter mobility. Supporting security functions. Security activation is done in RRC connected state. UV derives the keys and algorithms required for ciphering and integrity protection and configures the lower layers by activating the security context. Recovery from radio link failure UV re-establishes the RRC connection when there is a radio link failure, handover failure, RRC reconfiguration failure or any other type of failure that would cause the termination of RRC connection. Establishment, Configuration, Maintenance and Release of Radio Bearers for MBMS Services QoS Management Functions, which includes assignment and modification of semi-persistent scheduling configuration information for uplink and downlink. Transfer of dedicated NAS messages from the NAS layer of UV to the NAS layer of MME and vice versa. Transfer of UV radio access capability information from UV to EUTRAN. Now let's see the different RRC states defined in LTE. RRC has two states, that is RRC idle and RRC connected states. And there are different services and functions performed in each state. RRC idle is a state where no RRC connection exists between the UV and EUTRAN. And in RRC connected state, there is an active RRC connection established between UE and EUTRAN. In RRC idle state, the UE performs functions such as PLM and selection, acquiring system information, monitoring paging channel, cell reselection mobility, etc. There is no RRC context of UE stored in the E node B. UE shall have a unique identity allocated which would help to identify the UV in a tracking area. In RRC connected state, UV has an RRC connection with EUTRAN. UV has its context available in EUTRAN and EUTRAN knows which cell does the UV belongs to. In RRC connected state, data can be transferred between UV and network. UV performs network controlled mobility such as handover and redirection.
UE performs neighbor cell measurement and measurement reporting as configured by the RRC. UV monitors PDCCH control signaling channel to check if any transmission over the shared data channel has been allocated to the UV, such as paging information, system information, or downlink data scheduled for the UV. UV also reports channel quality information and feedback information to eNodeB. UV may be configured for DRX period depending on UV activity level. This helps in UV power saving and efficient resource utilization. Now let's see the RRC state transitions and interworking of LTE with legacy radio access technologies. So these are the two RRC states of LTE or EUTRA, RRC connected state and RRC idle state. Now for a UV to transit between these two states, that is for transiting from RRC idle to RRC connected state, UV performs RRC connection establishment procedure. And for transiting from RRC connected state to RRC idle state, UV performs RRC connection release procedure. Now these are the RRC states in WCDMA or UTRA. They are cell DCH, cell FATCH, cell PCH, or URA PCH and UTRA idle state. And these are the states in GSM. They are GSM connected or GPRS packet transfer mode and GSM idle or GPRS packet idle. In these two RATs as well, UE performs connection establishment and release procedure to transit between idle state and connected state. Now, to move between different RATs in connected and idle mode, UE performs various mobility procedures such as cell selection in idle mode and handovers in connected mode. And the RRC state transitions also happen while moving between different RATs. When UE is in EUTRA RRC idle state, it performs cell reselection from LTE to WCDMA where it transits to UTRA idle state. And when it reselects to GSM, it transits to GSM idle or GPRS packet idle state. Now to enable the reselection process, the UE performs measurements of various attributes or parameters of the serving and neighboring cells. For performing IRAT reselection to WCDMA, UV searches for neighboring U-trans cells or WCDMA cells and starts measuring the attributes. UV reads the SIB6 message to know about the neighboring cell list, which contains the list of carrier frequencies and scrambling codes. Similarly, for performing IRAT reselection to GSM, UV searches for neighboring GRAN cells or GSM cells and starts measuring the attributes and UV reads SIB7 message to know about the neighboring cell list which contains the list of GSM ARF CNs. UV also reads the SIB3 message which contains the information about serving cell reselection parameters which enables the UV to decide whether it needs to perform IRAT measurements or not. The IRAT measurements can be skipped if the serving cell attributes fulfills certain search and measurement criteria. Based on the measurements of serving and neighboring cells, a cell is identified to which the UV should camp on. Now the IRAT reselection is based on absolute priorities where the UV camps to highest priority RAT available. The priorities are signaled to UV via system information or RRC message. So, based on the absolute priorities and ranking process, IRAT reselection is performed from LT to WCDMA or GSM. Now, when UE is camped on another RAT, that is WCDMA or GSM, it performs cell reselection to LT in idle state. UE needs to know the carrier frequencies of the neighboring LT cells to perform the measurements of the attributes. When UE is camped on WCDMA and is in UTRA idle, URA PCH, cell PCH or cell FATCH state, it performs cell reselection from UTRAN to EUTRAN. UE reads the SIB19 message to get the EUTRAN cell reselection parameters. Based on absolute priority given in SIB19 message 
or by dedicated signaling message, cell reselection is performed. When UV is camped on GSM to enable IRAT cell reselection from GRAN to EUTRAN, the EUTRAN frequencies are included in neighbor cell list along with the EUTRAN reselection parameters which are broadcast in system information type 2 quarter message. The priority value for serving GRAN cell and neighbor EUTRAN cell is given in system information or channel release message. The reselection method performed by UV while in GSM network is known as COO or cell change order. Now, when the UV is in EUTRA RRC connected state, it performs IRAT handover to UTRAN or GRAN. Handover is a network control procedure and the source access system that is LTE network in this case is responsible for preparation of handover execution process such as providing necessary information to target access system, which would allow the system to prepare radio resources. So in RRC connected state, the UE and E node B may have set up at least one signaling radio bearer or data radio bearers, and there might be ongoing data transfer between UE and E node B. So in RRC connected state, the E node B may configure the UE using broadcast or dedicated control information to perform measurements. UV follows the measurement parameters and perform IRAT neighbor cell measurements and report to E node B. The E node B will decide to initiate handover to UTRAN or GRAN. The E node B conveys the handover decision to UV by sending RRC connection release message including UTRAN or GRAN information which contains the target RAT and frequency to which the UV must camp on. For handover towards GRAN, the IRAT cell change order with NACC that is network assisted cell change is supported which is done even without performing measurements. When UV is in WCDMA network and there is an ongoing data session, UV is in cell DCH state. UV performs EUTRAN measurements by using idle periods created by compressed mode in cell DCH state. Now a handover to EUTRAN can be triggered using RRC connection release message. UV shall attempt to camp on a suitable LT cell on one of the frequencies indicated in the handover command in RRC connection release message. When UV is in GSM network, the handover from GSM or GPRS to EUTRAN happens using packet cell change order method or COO method which facilitates the access of connection establishment in the target EUTRAN cell. EUTRAN measurements are performed in GSM idle frames in a time multiplexed manner. Now this figure illustrates mobility support between EUTRAN, CDMA 2001 XRTT and CDMA 2000 HRPD. This is a representation of an inter-system mobility since LT belongs to 3GPP system and CDMA 2000 belongs to non-3GPP system. UE performs cell reselection from EUTRA RRC idle state to HRPD idle state. UE shall be able to make measurements on the HRPD cell in RRC idle mode to perform cell reselection. The UE performs measurement on HRPD when the signal quality from EUTRAN serving cell falls below a given threshold. The HRPD system information is broadcast in SIB8, which contains the HRPD neighboring cell information, CDMA timing information, etc. Now, for performing cell reselection or handover from EUTRAN to HRPD, UV must previously establish a presence in the HRPD network. This is done through pre-registration procedure or previous HRPD attachment. The information controlling the HRPD pre-registration is also provided in SIB 8. UV performs the cell reselection to HRPD while in RRC idle state and the reselection mechanism is same as that in 3GPP interrat cell reselection. In case of cell reselection from EUTRAN to 1X RTT, UV moves from EUTRA RRC idle to 1X RTT dormant state. 
UE performs measurements on 1x RTT cells in idle mode. It performs CDMA 2000 1x RTT neighbor cell measurements during DRX periods and between paging occasions. The measurements are performed when the signal quality from EU trans serving cell falls below a given threshold. The reselection mechanism is same as that in 3GPP inter rat cell reselection. Now, in EUTRA RRC connected mode, the UE performs measurements on the HRPD network as directed and configured by the EUTRA network. The UE measures the strengths of each of the HRPD neighbor cells and reports them in an RRC message. Based on the measurement reports received, the E node B initiates handover procedure and sends a handover command in an RRC message to UE. The message contains the necessary information and parameters needed by the UE to perform handover. UE moves from RRC connected state to HRPD active state. For handover from EUTRAN to 1XRTT, UE performs measurements of 1XRTT cells and based on the measurement report, E node B commands the UE to perform handover to 1XRTT. Also, if UE supports CS fallback, then on making a voice call in EUTRA RRC connected mode, UE shall move to CS domain of 1XRTT. So this was all about the state transitions of LT RRC states between different rats and systems. Now let's discuss about the different radio bearers associated with RRC layer that are used to carry RRC and NAS signaling messages and user data. So basically there are two types of bearers. One that carries signaling messages called as signaling radio bearer that is SRB and another one that carries user data called as data radio bearer that is DRB. Now when UE is in RRC idle state it does not have any signaling or data radio bearer setup. Hence UE needs to have an RRC connection with the network to be able to transfer or exchange data with the network. For transferring NAS signaling messages such as attach and registration messages or control signaling messages to set up user plane bearer, UE requires to establish signaling radio bearer. And for transferring user application data, UE requires to establish data radio bearer. During the initial attach process, when the EPS bearer establishment takes place and also during the modification and release of the EPS bearer, the NAS signaling messages are encapsulated within the RRC message for uplink and downlink transmission. These messages are interpreted only by the NAS layer of UV and MME. The access stratum layer, however, provides a reliable and in-sequence delivery of NAS messages over the air interface. So the signaling radio bearers are of three types. The first is SRB0. It is used to transfer RRC message using CCCH logical channel. Now, when UE is attempting to establish an RRC connection, as you know, it does not have any signaling bearer established or any dedicated channel assigned. So UE transfers the initial request message using common control logical channel over SRB0. It uses transparent mode RLC. Next is SRB1. It is used to transfer RRC messages using DCCH logical channel. Now, after network receives the initial RRC request message over SRB0, it assigns SRB1 to UE for transferring further RRC messages. It is also assigned a dedicated control logical channel. SRB1 also includes the piggyback NAS messages until SRB2 is set up. It uses acknowledged mode RLC. And last we have SRB2. SRB2 is also used to transfer NAS messages using DCCS logical channel. It is used for dedicated transfer of NAS messages. The NAS messages transferred using SRB2 can also be encapsulated within RRC message but it won't include any RRC protocol control information. SRB2 has lower priority than SRB1 and it is always configured by network after security activation. The PDCP performs ciphering and integrity protection for messages on SRB1 and SRB2. 
it uses acknowledged mode RLC. Now, user plane information is carried in default bearer or dedicated radio bearer. Default bearer is established as part of the attached procedure. There can be multiple default bearers established during multiple PDN connectivity procedure. Each default bearer will be associated with different APNs and will have different purpose of usage. The bearer established during initial attach process can be used for internet connectivity such as browsing or email. Then for sending or receiving MMS, additional bearer can be established. Dedicated bearers are established during VoLTE calls. So this was all about the RRC layer functions, the different RRC states and transition of states between different RATs and the different types of bearers associated with RRC. Thanks for watching.